It is a fine morning. The sun is shining through the trees as usual. The birds are chirping melodiously as they fly about, and roads are being cleaned as usual. Even me and Ting Ting are sleeping on our bed. The wind softly blows from the curtains. Her day has begun as she opens her eyes. She gently gets up from the bed, glancing at Zhuo Xiang before walking to the bathroom for her daily routine. She washes, changes, and leaves the room. When Zhuo Xiang's eyes open as if he had been awake all this time, a strange look passes through them as he ponders over their relationship of four years before deciding as he slips from the bed. Breakfast is being served as he lazily shuffles into the kitchen. She does the dishes as he sits on a chair, looking at her intently. As he moves through his daily routine, something is going through his mind, looking for an opportune moment to speak. As she reminds him of her parents visiting this weekend, he cannot hold it any longer and yells a word vomit to end their relationship. Tensions are high in the room as everything goes completely still. Both hold their breath waiting for what is about to happen. When she cheerfully turns around, asking for an explanation, hoping she misheard. However, Juo is serious as he repeats his words, albeit slightly anxious. This causes a shift in her mood as she swiftly leaves for work with a promise to resume this conversation tonight. They exhale softly as soon as they leave each other's sight. The scene shifts to a cafe where Juo sits with another lady, having a serious conversation. The lady presumably has just broken up with her boyfriend and asks if he has done the same. Much to her annoyance, he hesitantly asks her for a little more time. He grabs her hand, offering her reassurance, when suddenly she gets up from her seat and slaps him hard across his face, whipping his whole body sideways. Zhuo can only sputter, cheek swollen, as he gathers his bearings. When she threatens to break up, he also loses his temper, chalking her and his ex-girlfriend to be the same when dealing with him. Cut, a clapperboard sounds, breaking them both from their trance. It seems he was subbing for the lead guy to go through the emotions required in the scene. He advises female actresses on how to act on the scene according to their caliber. All of them are making a short film for their channel and hope that they can increase their views substantially through the film. Zhuo stands up from the set, yelling encouraging words before heading to his office. Sitting in his cubicle, he picks up his phone, only to receive a message from Ting Ting. She has cooked him his favorite dish and is inquiring whether he will return for dinner. He sighs, curling in himself, his mood sours as he remembers their earlier conversation. Shrugging this off, he heads out to his colleagues and invites them to a buffet, his treat. They all have their excuses as they hurriedly wrestle out of the premises, leaving him to his misery. Zhuo is, however, hell-bent on avoiding going home. He seems to regret what he said about the breakup, expressing conflicting emotions before suddenly. The electricity goes out, leaving the office in darkness. He stumbles out of his chair, worried whether he saved the last edit of the film. But as he is breaking down, he hears footsteps shuffling over to the room. Thinking the worst, he staggers while mumbling threats to the potential burglars. The light blinks, and he is surrounded by confetti and his colleagues, who surprise him. Feeling confused but happy, he sits back down before remembering that his last edit was unsaved and angrily questions his fellows. The culprit, however, is none other than his boss. He stammers in his response as he cannot scold his boss. He then questions why they all have returned to the office at midnight. She makes a pondering face, asking him to guess, but reveals herself that their team's short films have crossed 1 billion views. And as she strolls over to his chair and leans on him from behind, causing him to stumble on her involuntarily, she reveals that their company's board of directors has decided to promote him to the new operation manager. Approval surges through the room as his colleagues congratulate him sincerely. Getting emotional, he stands up and thanks them all happily. He and his boss share a look as she takes them all to eat out in celebration. The scene shifts to a restaurant, drinks, and food flowing freely. He grabs his drink and cheers to their companionship, hoping they all stick together for their company and flourishing. The atmosphere is lively as they eat and celebrate. Zhuo, however, when he takes out his phone and sees his girlfriend on display, feels a rush of emotions and quickly downs his drink in response, getting drunk. In the meantime, Min Huey, the boss, goes to the toilet when she hears shuffling on the other side of her door. The shuffler turns out to be a man, none other than Zhuo, his employee, causing her to look at him from the door in alarm. He bangs on her cubicle door in a drunken stupor, forcing her to open the door. Hearing no response, he clicks the door open and stumbles onto his boss, causing them to tumble onto the floor. Unaffected, he staggers up to use the bathroom but cannot open his belt, the alcohol hindering his motor functions. Annoyed, he decides not to open his pants and wet himself, much to his boss's horror. She quickly walks up to help him as he is mumbling about today's dinner and his promotion to seemingly a stranger. 
both grappling against each other, and he thanks her, mistaking Min Huey to be a guy, and walks into the toilet cubicle. She waits for him outside, clearly conflicted by all this. However, he is none the wiser as he relieves himself inside. Both Zhuo and Min Huey exit the toilet stalls, with him leaning on her heavily for support. He checks his pockets for his car keys when she forbids him to drink and drive and offers to call a taxi instead. When she beckons him for his phone, she hears no response, and much to her surprise, he lies down on the floor, asleep apparently. This makes her remember their university days, and as she is getting his phone from his pocket, he gets up thinking that they are in the car already, fumbling around with his eyes closed, grabbing her by mistake. Soon she manages to drag him out on the street towards the taxi she called and settles him inside. But when she attempts to get out of the car, he holds onto her arm, mistaking her for his girlfriend, Ting Ting. Seeing both of them in a tug of war, the drink impatiently inquires whether she will be coming with them. Helpless, Min Huey agrees and settles next to him in the car, signaling the driver to start the journey. As they settle in their journey, he huffs miserably, still mistaking Min Huey for Ting Ting, and asks if she is happy. He is promoted today. She huffs, annoyed that she isn't his girlfriend. Not understanding, he doubles down on his questioning, causing her to agree. He gets more upset, however, asking whether she even loves him, his emotional dams opening, saying that she has her separate room that he cannot enter, and how she has mixed responses when he makes her the food she likes. He laments how he works hard to give her a happy life. His feelings are a mess as he remembers some man saying that Ting Ting is unhappy being in a relationship with him, causing the driver to misunderstand. However, Zhuo is wallowing in his misery as he talks about how she is still with him even though he has nothing to give, how she has stopped scolding or criticizing him even when he purposefully does things to annoy her. He feels as if Ting Ting is giving up on their relationship. Tears fall down his eyes as he declares that he doesn't want to break up but doesn't want her to be forced to stay with him in a miserable life hating him. He suddenly spins Min Huey by her waist and hugs her for emotional support. She swiftly pushes him back, feeling conflicted. Zhuo is undeterred as he further leans into her personal space swearing to make her happy. The car thickens with passion, heartbeats echoing in their ears when he flops down, engulfed by sleep again. He mutters in his sleep, wishing to retract his decision in the morning. Min Huey needs clarification on all this. However, before she can comfort him, the taxi stops to a halt, signaling the end of their journey. She pays the driver thanking him for the ride. The driver replies, saying she should forgive him as he seems genuine, before leaving to give them space. She stammers in response before irritation takes over as she yells at him to wake up. However, Zhuo is dead to the world as he doesn't even stir, causing her to take extreme measures and slap him awake, claiming he is sleeping during work hours. This does the job as he stumbles awake, making him nauseous as he moves too suddenly. Min Huey has to quickly get him out of the car on the footpath to vomit. He stands up straight, wiping his face from a tissue she offered, his mind sobbing as he takes in his surroundings. Realizing they are outside his home, he questions his boss, confused about how they got here. She remarks sarcastically on how he drank too much, causing her to take him home, personally ensuring his safety. Feeling bashful, he bows in gratitude and asks why she tagged along. She offers no clarification before heading to the taxi, urging him to be on time tomorrow, as her father would like to meet him, much to his surprise. Feeling guilty for making her drive him home, he offers to drive her back, which she refuses, claiming that Ting Ting is waiting for him. She wants to drive his car home for now and urges him to go home quickly and not cause his girlfriend more worry, driving off. Zhuo straightens up, brushing off his disheveled appearance, before sighing with dread and walking to his home unwillingly. Zhuo Xiang begrudgingly walks into his apartment complex as the night goes on. Standing outside the main door, he nervously shuffles on his feet, gathering his courage. He loosens his tie and huffs anxiously contemplating how to go inside, whether to knock on the door or use his keys. Worried about her response, he ponders whether or not he should even go inside, as he had upset Ting Ting earlier that day. He accidentally drops the keys and slides onto the ground, weeping for the door to open before it suddenly does. Ting Ting steps out, saying she was worried, and tells him to come inside to take a bath and freshen up. He sits up abruptly, expressing his irritation before his memories catch up, and he feels stupid. Bashfully he mutters an incoherent response. Ting Ting feels the emotional shift but shakes it off and asks him to hurry inside. Confused and flushed, he stumbles inside, 
following her, when she turns around to check if he reeks of alcohol and comments on how he drank more than usual tonight. Stuttering, Zhuo Xiang wonders how Ting Ting is not behaving out of the ordinary, like she is pretending nothing ever happened. Even considering whether he even said those words in the morning, shaking his head nervously, he looks down when she grabs him suddenly and pecks him on his lips, stunning him on his feet. And as suddenly as she came on to him, she moved away, not before congratulating him on his promotion cheerfully. Shocked as to how she knew, he questions her. Ting Ting clarifies that his boss, Min Huey let her know in case they stayed out late to celebrate, not to cause any worry to Ting Ting. He begins to restart the conversation from earlier, but she shrugs him off, saying she will make him some tea to cure his hangover. He walks around his home looking at their numerous pictures together, wondering conflictedly whether Ting Ting loves him. She seems happy, so maybe she does, but why is she behaving like this today if she does love him? As he gets worked up mentally, a scent stops his reverie. Ting Ting has brewed the tea and presents him with a cup. Soon they settle down with him beside the dining table and her on a sofa chair on the other side of the room. Sliding down from the sofa, he wonders aloud whether they should hire a maid for housework. This shocks her slightly, and she asks if it's because she isn't good at cleaning the house herself, which he rejects immediately. Sighing, she asks why ambiguously, which prompts a question from him. Finally showing some emotion, she asks whether he has a colleague interested in him, causing him to spit his tea at the sheer absurdity, or whether he cheated on him and is feeling bad now. Affronted at the accusations, he asks if she views him as this vile of a human. They both fall silent after this, pondering over the situation, when she shouts her mind asking if he feels forced into having a family, specifically a child, with her. Flabbergasted, Zhuo Zhang choked on his tea, coughing miserably. She offers him some tissues while continuing her questioning. He rejects that notion anyhow, making Ting Ting emotional as she inquires tearfully about why he wants to break up, going as far as claiming that she will have a family with him if that is what he wants. Zhuo returns the favor, handing her a tissue, and begins a question on if she is even happy with him and if she feels pained or saddened sometimes. Shocked, she wonders if he is still inebriated and asks him for further elaboration. He continues to show how she is more hardworking and capable at work and home, but he cannot offer her any assistance in either area. He wallows about how perfect and bright she is and how he would be miserable without her, but his absence won't sadden her. Getting more and more anxious, he tells her that she can be with someone else if that makes her happy, and he will let her go and that to ensure her happiness. Ting Ting softly calls out to him, tears falling down her eyes, asking if this isn't hurting her. He folds into himself, feeling more miserable at making her cry. He staggers up, puts his cup down, and walks away, wishing to be alone. In a flashback, he remembers that when they rented this house, Ting Ting had an abnormal request to have a room completely to herself. He thinks he has never been inside that room, even after so many years. Back to the present, he reminisces how their long-term relationship was built on mutual trust, which he believed until he met that man, in flashback, who is praising Ting Ting and warns that his next words might sound cruel to him. Shaking himself out of this, he strips off his clothes before slipping inside the bathtub, sighing. The flashback continues as the man claims that Zhuo and Ting Ting's relationship is the main hindrance between her and her successful career. They sit in front of each other in a cafe, tensions high as he claims that they only need love and to be financially decent, and accuses the man of breaking them up solely so that she can earn more for her company. The man isn't bothered by that and inquires whether he has ever seen her shine. He is then shown a video of her and her work as the man claims that she, if left by him, can achieve greater heights and guide everyone around him. He continues that neither he nor Zhuo can be as successful as she, but he can help her become well established. This infuriates him to no end, and he angrily slams on the table, asking if he only wants Zhuo to easily hand over Ting Ting and watch from the sidelines as the man woos her off. The man admits that although he may have feelings for her, he doesn't want to use money or power to break them off for his benefit. He then shows him a video clip, the contents widening his eyes. The video shows Ting Ting cheerfully answering a phone call. However, her joyful facade falls when he puts the phone down. She quickly brings down her drink and rushes out of the camera lens, her eyes full of tears. Stumped, Zhuo asks the meaning of this. The man then explains that this clip was from a company's celebration party and continues on his long-winded spiel. But he has no temperament for this and asks him to be concise, claiming that he has never harmed her. The man continued that he got worried and went after her. That is when he sees her on the balcony bawling her eyes out pitifully. He claims that Zhuo Xiang is the one who is hurting her. Now back in the present, he tearfully admits that those words have embedded themselves in his heart, 
and he is still unsure how he has hurt her so badly. Shifting on the tub, he closes his eyes when she comes in to get him out, mistaking him to be asleep. However, she calls out to someone claiming she needs help getting him out. That is when a girl, earlier similar to Ting Ting, peeks from the bathroom door asking whether he is asleep. She hovers over her passed out boyfriend in the tub, a mix of concern and annoyance, while her twin peeks from the door, asking whether he has slept. She checks that by pinching his cheeks, which he responds to with a snore, she declares him dead to the world in his slumber. Unsure, her twin steps into the bathroom, nonetheless encouraged by Ting Ting as she cheerfully messes with her boyfriend. Zhuo is shown to have a set of beard and mustache made of bath foam by Ting Ting. However, her twin admonishes her, as she calls her childish, for doing such acts. She is unbothered, clearly enjoying teasing her boyfriend as she asks her sister to join in the fun, as she takes her by the hand and makes funny foam objects on him, which is surprisingly off to Dreamland. Seeing her boyfriend in such a hilarious state sends Ting Ting into a fit of giggles. Her sister is, on the other hand, more concerned about getting him out of the cold water before he gets sick from it. Soon they got him out of the tub, one holding his legs and the other grabbing him by his arms. Puffing in exhaustion, both girls comment on how heavy he is to carry. Ting Ting remarking on how an office job has made him lazy and chubby. In the next scene, they have him in the bed surrounding him as they recover from the strenuous exercise. He snores away as the girls discuss Ting Ting and his earlier conversation hours ago. She relays how he didn't cheat or have any commitment issues but didn't clarify the exact issue. As the sister wonders about his reasoning aloud, he suddenly hugs her from behind, drunkenly whining how he cannot drink and stay as his girlfriend awaits him at home. She looks over to Ting Ting for help who signals her to gently shrug him off before leaving. She does so as her sister settles into the bed with her boyfriend, leaving the outsider of their relationship feeling missing out. Ting Ting's sister, however, is shown glancing at him with a conflicted emotion on her face before she steps out of the room, leaving the couple to their devices. Next morning rolls in, as the sun shines on their housing complex, with birds chirping awake. Zhuo groans awake, his face looking worse for the wear, the shenanigans of last night taking a toll on him. She urges him to get up quickly so he won't be late for work. However, his response engulfs her in a warm apologetic hug, much to her surprise. He begins by apologizing to her, to which she asks why. He replies that she must tell him if he is too much for her one day and must communicate that with him. However, as he looks around, he realizes that he isn't in the bathroom but in his bed and has no recollection of how he got there. She tells him that he slept in the tub and carried him here by herself. Suspiciously, he asks what he said last night while drunk, to which she assures him that it was all multilingual gibberish, and nothing more. He is shocked by her pretense. She turns to him, perplexed about why he is staring at her. She also apologizes that they have been selfish and have caused a burden on the people special to them. Zhuo Zhang, confused, asks whom she met by them, to which she quickly retracts that he might have misheard. The scene soon changes to a road, Zhuo is seen being driven by her to their offices, and he adjusts the rearview mirror to glance at her. Gazing around the car given to Ting Ting by her company, he wonders how this car feels unsuitable to her compared to her other more home car. His thoughts wonder how she has been working hard since she graduated and how she can shoulder more work than others due to her brain capacity and work ethic. She has become one of the CEOs of their country's media company, with over a hundred people working under her. How her success has earned their company billions and how other rival companies want her to join them. As Zhuo is lost in thought, looking at her absent-mindedly, he garners Ting Ting's attention, who is curious. As he refuses to gaze at her, she changes the subject by gossiping about her mother's hometown relative, much to his surprise. He accuses them that this isn't like her usual gossiping behavior. She presses on how the issue is a culture shock, piquing his interest. He urges her to continue, looking for some plot content for his short film. She scolds him, asking him not to invade the privacy of others. They both are bickering, with Zhuo being mischievous and Ting Ting playfully exasperated. However, she continues with the story saying that the man was married to a girl for a while when he unknowingly realized that he lived with two of them, his wife and her sister. He disbelieves how he never found out that another person lived with them and what an idiot he must be. She agrees mischievously that such an idiot does exist. 
As the car ride continues, he receives an emergency work phone call informing him they are out of manuscripts in the office. Tensed, he urges her to return home as he has backup manuscripts at home that he needs to grab. She agrees to swerve the car swiftly before offering to get off and grab them herself while he drives to his office. Juo disagrees, saying she has an important meeting and doesn't know where to find the scripts at home. But she stammers just as he takes off his belt to step out. Nervous, Ting Ting hurriedly yelled a refusal, grabbing his arm to stop him. Perplexed, he questions her odd behavior today, petting her lovingly. Bashful, she stammers an incoherent response making him further weirded out as he assumes that she has something on her mind and offers to call a cab for himself, which she refuses again. As she starts the journey back, he questions her mood swings again, but instead of answering, she pedals the brakes harshly, causing them to jerk around in the car. Juo is slowly losing his patience as he asks why she stopped instead of driving, to which she dazedly hums before turning the car around. As she starts to say something again, he interrupts her harshly and orders her to start driving, which she does. However, while driving, she tries another method, unlocking her phone to do something, when he yells again, urging her to watch where she is driving as they collide into oncoming traffic. Seeing her distracted, he takes the steering wheel in his own hands and turns the car to safety in the nick of time, both physically thrown into the direction of the turn due to the sudden sharp turn. The car stops to the side as both try to regulate their breathing. He is extremely and rightfully perturbed by her seemingly sudden and perfect behavior now, and demands her hand over her phone to focus on driving safely. As he thinks this is the first time he raises his voice at her, he glances over to see her pout indignantly, much to his delight. Soon they reach their complex, and as soon as the car stops, she jumps out in a dash towards the door, followed by a gobsmacked duo. He inquires why she is running, to which she responds that she is helping him get to his stuff early. Unconvinced, he gains on her, to which she stops in her tracks, to which he follows suit. Now serious, he asks whether she is hiding something about why she is being this weird. Ting Ting, however, denies it, now rushing towards their home once again. Within seconds they reach their main door, she brings her hand to knock on the door, but her wrist is grabbed midair by Zhuo Xiang, who inquires about the need to knock on a door leading to an empty home. Flushed, she loudly giggles, agreeing. He tells her to relax and takes out his house keys to open the door when behind them. A delivery boy arrives in front of their door. The worker then asks them to step beside the door as he needs to deliver the stuff. He questions the order just as the door to the home opens, revealing Ting Ting's twin, who steps out half asleep to receive the order. She looks up, rubbing her eyes to meet the gaze of Zhuo Xiang and Ting Ting gaping at her in surprise and horror. The three gape at each other wordlessly when the twin tries to close the door on them. He thwarts her effort and blocks the door, storming in, demanding an explanation. Behind him, Ting Ting tries to tiptoe into her room, hopefully unnoticed, but unfortunately, he grabs her hand and orders her to stay right there and not escape. Assuring that Ting Ting will sit patiently on the sofa, he knocks on her twin's room door. He loosens his necktie, apparently to calm himself, as he asks her to come out of the room, to which she weirdly responds, claiming there is no one inside. Rendered speechless for a second, Juo knocks on the door again with more force, claiming her retreat to be useless. Hearing no response, he dares her to try to avoid him, threatening to stay outside the door until she comes out. She grows increasingly nervous inside the room when she suddenly hears a key jingle, signaling the lock opening. He opens the door, and as he steps inside, he is greeted with a new world. The room is filled with scattered belongings, including two of his pictures, much to his surprise. Her clothes are strewn across the room, but she is nowhere to be seen. Scanning the room, his eyes land on the bed, where he spots a foot sticking out of the blanket. As he grabs the foot, pulling her out, she whines in pain at being dragged, to which he then asks her to step out on her own accord. The scene then changes to him sitting across from both sisters interrogatively. He begins by looking angry from his expression. He mostly feels confused about what to say or how to feel. Both sisters avoid eye contact with him, clearly nervous. Zhuo crosses his arms, asking Ting Ting for an explanation, to which both the twins begin to answer. He interrupts the twin sisters stammering to ask his girlfriend once more. This causes the sister to tear up under his stern gaze, to which she responds that they both are Ting Ting, as she offers her sister a reassuring part. This news makes him stand up in shock, but before he can ask any further questions, his phone rings in his pocket, which Ting Ting points out, causing him to answer the call begrudgingly. He yells into the call, which turns out to be from his office, reminding him of the manuscript. Running inside the room, he asks her about his hard disk drive and other stuff, causing them both to respond each time in unison. 
Gathering his stuff, he walks back into the room and requests them both to explain all this to him and urges them not to avoid him, making them nod quickly. He then takes the sister by the hand to take her back with him. She clarifies that it isn't her day at work, stopping him in his tracks. To this, Ting Ting huffs, annoyed, before leading him out as he warns them both once more. The ride back is tense as he has time to ponder his current situation. In his thoughts, his life as he knew it had changed drastically. His heartbeat sinks with his scattered thoughts, and he quietly rides to his office. Whereupon reaching, he hands over the drive to Da Zing, informing him that it contains some backup ideas he can use to film today. Da Zing thanks him, claiming that he saved them a huge sum of money they would have lost had they not had anything to film today. He is already having a bad day, has no time for such shenanigans, and calls him out on his behavior. He then instructs him to decide on the plot before searching for a location. As he walks to his office, he orders the other employee to prepare the lucky draw for today. His employees comment on how Zhuo seems different today, deeming him out of earshot, which he is not. He snaps at them before slamming the office door with force. Walking inside, he lights up a cigarette to calm his nerves. He thinks back to his previous interactions with her girlfriend and wonders how much of his recent conversations were with Ting Ting and how much was with her sister. He fears he will come to work early today, leaving them alone to escape. As he smokes, his boss walks in, making him snuff his cigarette before standing up to greet her. She comments on how he still looks dazed, to which he remarks that he has never been this drunk before in his life. Thanking him for the car, his boss returns the keys to him. He looks embarrassed, saying he should be the one expressing his thanks, not vice versa. She responds that they both have to thank each other for the last night and can do so without contradicting each other. Humming, he smiles in agreement before switching to a more nervous and somber expression, causing Min Huey to ask about his well-being again. He responds with a cross-question regarding her understanding of his girlfriend, Ting Ting. Confused, she begins to reply, but before she can muster a sentence, he retracts the question and asks whether she would like him to do anything for her. This reminds Min Huey of the reason she visited him in the first place. She tells him that her father, the chairman, wants to meet him. This shocks Zhuo Yang slightly. However, his boss reminds him of last night when she told him that higher-ups wanted to meet him and rushed him out of the office. As he is leaving, she tells him not to embarrass her in there. Shortly after, they reach the chairman's chambers, and Min Huey knocks on the door signaling their arrival. Once inside, Juo formally greets the chairman, bowing his head. The chairman smiles at this, brushing off his formality, and asks him to sit. As they sit across one another, the chairman lights up an incense, which relaxes him immensely, much to his pleasant surprise. Min Huey informs him that this fragrance is from Fiji, but she mistakenly calls the chairman his dad. Mr. Chairman reminds her not to call him dad during work hours. He then shifts his attention to him, claiming that Min Huey always praises his performance. Zhuo Yang thanks both of them, maintaining that he is offering his best not to disappoint them. Pleased with the answer, Mr. Chairman asserts that he keeps up his performance and pours them Da Hong Pao tea. Zhuo comments on the peculiar name of the tea, to which Min Huey responds that Di Hong Pao is known as the king of tea, and is extremely rare. Only a few tea trees are grown in Wuyi Mountains and are cultivated from generation to generation. This makes him feel honored and anxious as he accepts the teacup from the chairman. The three drink their teas silently, Mr. Chairman and Min Huey glancing at him. The chairman then remarks how his daughter is not easy to work with, having her own strengths and weaknesses. He agrees that knowing her since their university days, he knows she has her share of troubles, much to her initial indignance, but her value to their team exceeds that far more than any of her shortcomings. Min Huey is immensely pleased by the response, as Mr. Chairman continues that he was afraid that her short temper hindered her social and romantic life. He replies that she had her fair share of suitors during their university days, but they still needed to meet her high standards and thus were rejected, unfortunately. This turn in conversation makes Min Huey bashfully as she snaps at them to remain professional. However, the chairman is undeterred as he asks Zhuo whether he has a girlfriend, making him unsure how to answer the question. To his benefit, Min Huey bursts, appalled at her father's line of questioning. She defends him by saying that he already has a girlfriend who is also her best friend and that she had introduced them both to each other, rendering his intended purpose of questioning useless. Mr. Chairman continues that he knows of his girlfriend and praises her talent and success, inadvertently making him feel slightly insecure. Min Huey again interrupts that they both are equal in their respective fields, and there is no need to compare them. Zhuo Ziang sits there anxiously as Mr. Chairman continues questioning him about his girlfriend, ponders over his response, thinking about the incident in the morning, taking his time. 
Min Huey coughs to make him snap out of his thoughts and answer, which he does. He tells Mr. Chairman that by working in separate fields, they understand each other better, they have their own life goals and can shock one another. Hearing his response, Min Huey looks at him thoughtfully before asking Mr. Chairman whether they can be excused now as they need to return to their jobs. Mr. Chairman replies that Ting Ting had been in talks of investment for some time before reaching a fruitful turn of events. Mr. Chairman then offers to work harmoniously to make this company have a brighter future. Zhuo looks at Min Huey for clarification regarding her father's earlier statement. Still, she brushes him off swiftly, telling him to go back to work, to which he obliges and takes his leave formally before leaving the office in a rush, causing Min Huey to look after him curiously. However, her father breaks her chain of thoughts by reminding her that his uncle will visit in a few days, and she must be home by then. She also replies by asking to be excused, claiming to be busy. He informs her that his company is currently in a very competitive position and requires her to come back for assistance. She stands up and offers her excuse, as she still needs to solve the financial issue before she can help him, and walks out. In the meantime, the office is bustling with work, and Zhuo Zhang is extremely busy making changes left and right in various video titles and completing project ideas. Time passes swiftly as he holds brainstorming meetings regarding deteriorating views on videos before settling on renewing the script entirely. The script they need to work on now seemingly exceeds their initial budget, but as it is a good script, he decides to talk to his boss, Min Huey, regarding the budget, hoping to get it increased. As lunchtime rolls by, he is sitting in his office glancing at his phone when he comes across Ting Ting's contact, her nickname reminding him of their university days, how she seemed very bright and energetic. A thought surges through his mind as he clutches the phone tightly before typing out and deleting a message to her asking what she is doing right now. He then begins to record a voicemail but eventually settles on sending emoticons, to which she begins to type a response. However, she is taking quite some time, indicating to him that she might be nervous. As he waits for her message, his colleagues call him out to have lunch, which he refuses, claiming he has something important to do. Zhuo Zhang's office colleagues are eating their meals. One of them calls him to come hurry up and eat. When he sees his mobile screen, he tells them to wait a moment. He receives a message from Ting Ting. He tells them to save one lion's head for him. Lion's head is a traditional Chinese dish. After seeing the message, he starts drinking his tea. Again, his message tone rings, and he grabs his phone from the table. This time Ting Ting sends him a very cute picture of herself with a central button opened at her chest. He zooms her sexy picture and spits out his tea. He asks her what she is doing. Is there anyone nearby? She also starts typing. She replies that she doesn't know what to do. He has a smile on his face, and he says to her to stop acting cute. She should think about how to explain it to him tonight. Now she should go and eat her meal. She replies, thank you piggy. She also says that he should also go and take his meal. His colleagues are still eating their meals. They again tell him nothing will leave for him if he doesn't come quickly. However, there are five dishes of lion's head. While standing up from his chair, he sees a notification on his laptop screen. He clicks it and sees a message from Ting Ting. She asks him if he has eaten his meal. He looks confused a bit. He asks her, didn't they just chat? She replies, what a coincidence. I guess our mindset is the same Zhuo Zhang asks her if she is the one Ting Ting at home. She replies, yup. He thinks something about her text. He messages her that one of them guys are through time travel. He says that he saw this on the news before. He asks Ting Ting when this happens and when they start dating. But she sent a blank message. Again, his colleagues call him for a meal. He tells them that he is coming right now. He texts Ting Ting that he is going to eat his meal. He will chat with them both tonight. He also thinks that he might be going crazy. Do things like time travel happen in real life? But there are also two things. One thing he understands is why Ting Ting is so energetic every day. Suddenly he recalls that day's conversation with her in the car when a husband comes to know that his wife is two people. She said that that man was such an idiot that he stayed together for many years but never discovered it. He asked if such an idiot existed. Finally, he goes for dinner. His subordinates and colleagues ask him why he came late for a meal. One of them tells him that Xiao Peng has eaten it all. But Xiao Peng says that he didn't eat the lion's head. Zhuo gives them a shut call. Meanwhile, Mu Hui enters the room. The black dress looks very sexy. She asks why they are arguing with each other. He asks her why she is still here, it's already late. His colleagues take their leave and go outside the room. He is leaving both alone. Zhuo feels nervous. Mu Hui sits on a chair. She asks him why he didn't get any food to eat. He tells her that it's okay. 
He is on a diet. Both look into each other's eyes, and she smiles and feels slightly shy. Mu Huey stands up from the chair and asks him to accompany her. She tells him that his dinner is delivered, and it is too much. She cannot finish it alone. He thanks her for the offer but denies it and tells her not to worry. He will manage. Mu Huey asks why he thinks she is worried about asking him. She tells him she is doing so just because a company member fell ill and cannot do work. Their company's progress will reduce, and they will face many losses. Zhuo asks if she is serious. She says, of course, she is serious. She says that it is not a small matter. He belongs to the company during working hours. She tells him that he doesn't have any sense as a manager. He should report to hire up to manage his team. He says all right, it's his pleasure. They go into the multifunctional hall, and he feels growls in his belly. Muhui gives him her meal to eat. He thanks her. He asks her which food stall sells such a maiden, bento. Mu Huey asks him about its taste. He says green beans are okay, but the meat taste is not good. He says to her, next time, not to order food from this stall. He will suggest to her some other food stalls. She tells him to throw it away if he doesn't want to eat. She is dieting and will only eat these. He asks her why she started dieting suddenly. If she has a target now, which company's young master? She stands up from the chair. After listening to Zhuo's question, Mu Huey stands up and tells him not to get cocky because she treats him well. She shouted at him to finish his meal, hurry up and go to earn money for the company. He feels bad and tells her that she has finally shown her color. He asks her if she wants to squeeze him dry. She has planned this since university. She accepts it because he is useful. He sits on a chair and says he will eat all his meals. Huey tells him not to take his dad's words to heart. While eating, Zhuo says it is good if the chairman doesn't know their relationship. He asks her to get a boyfriend as she has lived single for many years. He asks Mu Huey, the boss, which type of man she likes. He says that he and Ting will help her to find a boyfriend. She hits his head and shouts at him to mind his own business. He says to stop, as she has been beating her since university. She tells him that if she wants a boyfriend, she can get by herself. She warns him to be careful with his words. Otherwise, she will tell bad things about him to Ting Ting. He tells her to eat a meal. Otherwise, the rice will get cold. She feels annoyed and takes water from the otherwise fridge. She opens it and gives it to him to drink. He accepts it by saying thanks. After drinking water, he thanks her and tells her to know he is full and going to work again. After that, she cleans the table and puts the residuals into the dustbin. She tells him that too much water is left in the bottle and will be wasted. Then he drinks all the water. She looks around the dump. When he returns to work, the inspector general comes to his office. She informs him that short hot dance clips are meeting to end. He asks her to tell the advertising department to speed up and start preparing a new clip. He tells her that from comments, Yu Rong seems more popular. He asks to make her the center of the project. She tells him that everyone also thinks so and has already discussed this. Then he orders her to organize the project and tells her to go and call over the second group's group leader. Meanwhile, the cameraman comes inside and tells Zhuo that something bad has happened. Their original video got copyrighted by others, and their video is 10 times more popular. Zhuo asks him to stay calm and go to the law department to talk about the video website. He says he shows them evidence and asks them to remove the copyrighted video. He also tells him to increase awareness and take action on copyrighted videos earlier. But the cameraman says they will get more fans and viewers in this way. Zhuo cools him down and says not to get angry. If there are problems, solve them. And the cameraman goes outside. Zhuo feels so tired. He thinks he must interact with more people from different departments after his promotion. He also must manage a team. The video details and issues are already enough to overwhelm him. He tries to relax, but thoughts about Ting Ting come to mind. He thinks that he should go home. He tries to focus on his work instead of overthinking Ting Ting. But all in vain. While driving home, he again thinks about his girlfriend and her twin. He wants to return home as soon as possible, but he is also scared at the same time. He thinks he was calm while talking with them on QQ and WeChat, but he fears he can do the same thing while talking face to face. He also doesn't know what to talk about and how to talk. He recalls her words that they both are his ting ting. What he cannot understand is its meaning. He stops his car on signal and thinks she may be from time travel or a magic clone. But this is unbelievable. He must know the truth. He has tons of questions to ask. A man comes to his car window and shouts at him. What is he doing? It has been a green signal two times. Now he sees the green signal and says sorry to that man. He starts his car and reaches his home. He shivers while opening the door with a key. When he enters the door, he sees both Ting Ting sitting on the sofa and watching TV. 
One is wearing a blue rabbit dress and the other is a peach. He asks them why they are wearing this rabbit dress and eating potato chips. Are they watching drama? But they don't respond to him. He asks them why they are so calm. He shouts at them that he has been thinking about this whole day and worried about how to talk about them. Peach dress Ting Ting takes a bunch of chips. She grabs Zhuo Xiang's arm and takes him to the room. She closes the door with his foot. Both sisters grab his arms and say do not get angry. They smile and he blushes. Both of them make him sit on the sofa and they sit on chairs in front of him. They say that they discussed it and decided to let him know this in a relaxing atmosphere. They sit straight and ask him to ask questions as he is very serious. Zhuo starts to speak, but he shudders ERM in front of them. Both sisters laugh. He shouts at them to sit straight and stop laughing. Both sit, and he tries to speak but dumps. He thinks that when he starts relaxing, he sees two Ting Ting before him, and his heart beats quickly. He coughs, and Ting Ting, in a blue suit, gives him water. But it is very hot and feels like 100 degrees Celsius hot chicken. The mug drops from his hand. Both twins take tissue paper and wipe his shirt at the same time. He blushes. They ask him if he is alright. He asks them why they didn't tell him that this cup of water is very hot. Ting Ting in a blue suit asks Ting Ting in a peach suit, who tells him to hold the cup directly instead of holding it with a handle. She asks if it is getting burned or injured. Ting Ting in a peach dress says quickly, taking off his pent and checking if it is swollen. He shouts at them that he will do it by himself. He runs to the washroom, takes off his pent, and showers it under legs. He thinks that both sisters are looking nervous as he is. It makes him feel at ease. He again wears his pent. They give him blue and peach underwear to change into and not get sick. He wears the blue one. He again makes them sit straight and asks if their mother's relative's friend was led by two wives at home. Blue suit Ting Ting asks the other if she told him. She gives her check, but didn't they discuss it? When to tell him? Ting Ting, in a peach dress, tells her he talked to her and said some words. He said he was stupid. Both of them laugh. He scolds them and says it is very serious, so don't change the topic. He also smiles. She, in a peach suit, hits him with a cushion and says he can only get mad at them. She asks him to stop laughing. He didn't even discover who he was blaming after a few years, then know whom he is blaming. She tells Blue Rabbit Ting Ting that he got mad at them for the first time, so he says something. But Blue Rabbit Ting Ting also laughs. She is the older sister. He coughs and makes them sit straight. He says let's settle this first. He asks them that last night they too carried him to the bed. Both twins tell him that they carried him to bed last night. One thing Ting can't carry such a fat pig like him. The blue rabbit Ting Ting says that both wash stains on him before carrying him to the bed. He is about to ask the next question when peach rabbit Ting Ting asks if he got rolled in the mud. Blue rabbit Ting Ting tells him his body was so smelly with wine. He explained to them that he was happy and they celebrated. He further tells them that Mu Huey was also there and she is the witness that he didn't drink willingly. Peach Rabbit Ting Ting says that even his underwear was smelly and shocked. They washed it for a long time, and the smell was finally gone. She shows him his last night's picture on his mobile phone. He shouted at them that when he was sleeping, they both guys sexually harassed him. Blue Rabbit Ting Ting says it was Peach Rabbit Ting Ting's idea, but she replied to the blue one that she was also happy when she played with him. He tells them that they have changed the topic again. He makes them sit straight again and checks their mouth, teeth, nose, chest, and feet. He is very nervous. Both Ting Tings whisper that Zhuo Xiang must get excited after treating them like that. He finds no difference between them even after the examination. He thinks that time must be short. It may be some random wormhole like amoeba splitting. He feels very nervous when they split and become two. Finally, he gets the point that they are clones of each other. Blue Rabbit Ting Ting says that let him digest first. They ask him not to change the topic but to ask questions in his heart. They think that he gets crazy after knowing the facts about them. Blue Rabbit Ting Ting tells him it is not fantasy, but very simple. He asks then what is it? Now Blue Rabbit Ting Ting tells him a story that a long time ago, there were two twin sisters. They have the same clothes, the same hairstyle, and the same toys. Like regular twin sisters, they also needed to study. Then they heard people around them say that look alike. Zhuo Xiang stands up and asks if they are twins. Blue Rabbit Ting Ting replies yes, they are twins. And they thought that since they were alike, why did they need to give two exams? Now Peach Rabbit Ting Ting speaks that since both are smart and look alike, then why do they need to take two exams and learn the same thing twice? It was just a waste of one person's life. Zhuo asks what this logic is. He tells them that they have to study since both twins are two different people. But she replies who says so. 
What if two people become one? Blue Rabbit Ting Ting tells him that they are not clones, but he shouts at them and says they both are crazy and should get out of their minds. Blue Rabbit starts weeping, and Peach Rabbit Ting Ting asks him whose side he is. He cannot say them like that, even the world is saying this. He asks them how a normal person can think that. How did uncle and auntie get agree to it? Blue Rabbit tells the first time their dad scolded them. They thought something wrong had happened to their brain and brought them to a mental hospital for a checkup. Juo asks them how they escaped from a mental hospital. Peach Rabbit's sister hits him with her foot and says that he is the one who has a mental problem. She says their way of thinking is a little more advanced than normal humans. He gives her water to drink and to calm herself down. She says nothing is impossible. They decided to do it and they made it possible. She shows her foot to him and says it is itchy, scratching it. Blue Rabbit Ting Ting says she scratches her foot too. He says that they are trying to kill him with their smelly feet. Peach Rabbit Ting Ting says that they clean their legs daily. Their feet are not smelly like his feet. Both Ting Tings whisper that he is laughing at them. Should they kick him? Juo now thinks that it is something more than a bedtime story. He should not let his emotions take over. Now he understands why he is unfamiliar with them despite being with them for these few years. He thinks that they are no longer geniuses and perfect Ting Ting. But there is another problem twins started acting as one person. He asks them when he started dating and whether he dated both of them. They smile and say yes. Peach Rabbit's twin says if the world knows this, the entire man in this world will feel jealous. Now he further asks to whom he gave his first kiss. Peach Rabbit Ting Ting scratches her head. Blue Rabbit Twin blushes and says it was she. Then he asks about his virginity during summer break. His virginity. The first time they went to the hotel. Now it was the peach suit, Ting Ting. He asks then during the second time when she asks that it is her menstruation period. Ting Ting remarks that if her older sister hadn't fallen in love with him, they wouldn't have kept him in the dark about all this, much to his surprise. She claims that the ones who suffered in this situation are the sisters, not Juo's Yang. This makes the elder sister nudge her in annoyance, protesting that Ting Ting is also in love with him, to which she responds that she wouldn't have been if they weren't in a relationship because of her elder sister. This causes them to fully argue with each other, both twins insisting that they are the ones who are more invested in the relationship. Seeing the situation escalate, Juo tries to make them stop arguing. However, the attempt backfires as they snap at him, claiming that he is the reason they are arguing in the first place, causing him to let them carry on. But the moment has passed, and they all fall into silence instead. Engulfed by the awkwardness, Juo now thinks of being faced with the truth head on. Are they all thinking the same thing? This line of thinking makes him slightly nervous as he stammers to ask something, which makes Ting Ting lose her patience with him. However, the elder sister scolds her by saying he needs time to gather his thoughts, considering his circumstances. Juo isn't paying attention to this, as he wonders what he should say now, fearing that whatever he says can change their relationship dynamics. However, his heart wants him to clear any suspicious air around them so that he doesn't lose Ting Ting. Deciding on it, he asks them roundaboutly what the mother's friend's relative would have done in this place. The question renders them silent for a few seconds before Ting Ting stomps toward him and kicks him in a rage. She shakes him by his collar, claiming that it's his fault and that if he hadn't insisted on returning home today, none of this would have happened. Paul by the notion, he shoots back that if they hadn't returned today, was she planning to hide this forever from him? She snaps, claiming it's within their rights whether they tell him anything. Now both are up in arms with each other, screaming in each other's faces, much to the elder sister's dismay. She tries to pry them apart gently, but to no avail, causing her to smack them both on their heads to stop arguing. Both twins stop in their tracks as they realize that it's their first argument in all four years, causing them to giggle at the situation. However, the whole unrest causes some neighbors to complain about the noise. Zhuo Zhang huffs in apparent exhaustion, commenting about the neighbor before turning to them and apologizing. He apologizes for asking to break up yesterday, and for all the arguments today. However, as he continues his thoughts, he gets nervous trailing off. Seeing this makes both sisters anxious as they await his response, fearing the worst. He looks around as if unsure and asks them both to stay with him, shocking both to tears. This makes Zhuo Ziang concerned, and upon his questions, they claim that they had waited so long for him to acknowledge them. Ting Ting has an emotional outburst yet again as she hits his chest, blaming him for taking so long to figure them out. But she quickly recovers as they both hug him in gratitude. Both have mixed reactions as one is irritated that he took so long while the other apologizes for lying to him. After their argument has completely settled, they realize that none has had dinner yet. As Ting Ting offers both to make dinner, the sisters are stopped by Zhuo Ziang, 
who offers to cook for them, claiming that he hasn't done so since their university days. The sisters hear then and begin to argue about what to eat, with of them wanting tofu soup and the other wanting roasted tofu, to which Zhuo Ziang placates both of them by offering to cook all those dishes, commenting on how this all makes sense that she would like a dish one day, and then reject it the other. The scene then transitions to all three cooking together in a fun, harmonious environment and then eating together happily. Throughout, Zhuo Xiang wishes for them to remain like this, happy and together, feeling as if he is in a happy dream, never wishing to wake up from this. As he retires for the night, he feels as if a weight has been lifted off his shoulders, with almost all of his worries resolved except the video in which Ting Ting was crying. He sits on the bed, wondering about this anxiously when both of them enter the room, ready to sleep, shocking him. Ting Ting claims it was her sister's idea as they silently sit on both of his sides, each holding one of his hands in theirs. He is waiting patiently for his response. Ting Ting hugs him, delighted they have always wanted to try this. This makes Zhuo Xiang flustered as two Ting Tings and stammers surround him in mild protest. Now embarrassed, the elder sister asks whether this seems inappropriate to him, to which he denies but feels that this is also his desire. But he is slightly intimidated by how bold both of them have gotten. This insinuation makes both the sisters give him affronted looks as they take offense, with Ting Ting biting his hand in anger. The elder sister quickly takes her sister off his hand as Ting Ting claims that he is the only one they want to be with, and the elder sister resolves the matter by quickly tucking them all in the bed. During the night, Zhuo Xiang wakes up to an empty bed. Concerned, he glances around and finds the sisters against the window, sobbing softly. They turn to him and apologize profusely, insisting they had no choice. Speechless, Zhuo Xiang looks at them as he wakes up, realizing that what he just saw was nothing but a dream. He sighs, tired, glancing at the sisters before slipping outside of the blanket and walking to the balcony for a smoke. As the morning rolls in, he wakes up to the sound of his alarm and walks out of the room into the kitchen, where the elder sister cooks breakfast. She greets him, saying the breakfast will be ready shortly. Seeing her, he was reminded of his nightmare last night, and a conflicted look crossed his face concerning her. He quickly brushes it off, claiming that his brain is still fuzzy from sleeping, and walks to the toilet. As he opens the door, he finds Ting Ting using the toilet as she tells him to leave. Soon all three of them are at the breakfast table. Zhuo Xiang looks at all this with wonder and disbelief that all this is real. It then occurs to him to ask who is the younger and which is Ye Ting, making them both huff as he took so long to ask. And as Ting Ting begins to answer, her sister stops him asserting that his unanswered curiosity is his punishment. Hearing this, he gets flustered and spills milk on the table, and as he begins to clean up, he receives two text messages from his boss. Ting Ting asks if Min Hui is rushing him, to which he denies asserting that his work is going smoothly. Still, she advises him to go to work on time as he has just been promoted and to watch for any possible envious colleagues. He assures them that his Ting Ting is well experienced in society and will be careful. This makes the elder sister feel affronted, thinking he only complimented them, but he denies claiming that both are his Ting Ting. Soon he is ready to go to work. He bids his goodbyes to both of them cheerfully before leaving. Whistling merrily, Zhuo Xiang enters the office, greeting everyone with a smile. His colleagues are pleasantly surprised by this as they gossip about his sudden behavioral change. Hearing all the murmurs, he becomes slightly agitated, telling them all to mind their business. Sniffing in indignance, he orders them all to stop gossiping during work hours, or he will have them do more work. Then asks the Zing to gather everyone for a meeting to discuss the progress of their current project. As he walks by his employee's cubicle, he asks about the advertisement plan with the infamous celebrity and Laer. He hands the pamphlet to Zhuo, but then he leans into his ear, whispering that the advertisement is currently on hold, as ordered by Min Huey. This shocks Zhuo immensely, and he heads over to talk it out with his boss. As he walks to her office, his subordinate asks him whether the rumors regarding the possible bankruptcy of their company hold any truth to it. Although slightly disturbed by the mention, he shrugs it off without replying and walks into her office. As he opens the door, he is greeted by a furious Min Huey raining hell on someone on the phone. She accuses someone on the phone of not keeping their end of the agreement and says that the contract is already prepared. As Zhuo sits down in front of her, she finishes the call with a warning to fly over there if necessary. She throws the phone down as Zhu nervously asks her about the call. However, Min Huey is thinking about something as she distractedly tells him to prepare for a business trip. He is taken aback as this is the first thing to do in the morning without warning. He starts to panic about telling this to the sisters at home while his boss walks out of the room, ordering him to follow her without any context. He rushes out of the office blindly, 
causing a collision with his boss as they both fall to the ground. Mortified, he quickly pulls her up as they head to the parking lot. He again asks her for an explanation, but she replies that they will talk during the journey. However, as they get settled in the car, she breaks the news that Enla Er wants to cancel the contract, rendering him speechless. Flabbergasted, Zhuo Xiang asks whether there were any disagreements regarding the conditions as to what happened this late into discussions. She informs him that that is unclear, thus their impromptu trip. She continues that they must sign and Laer no matter what. The investor's continued support depends on it. Zhuo stops his train of thought as he wonders why she brought him instead of their business manager, as this was a business meeting. She claims that she brought him along for good luck, but this absurd claim makes him lose his footing on the car pedals, dangerously causing them to swerve on the road. Both tumble like clothes in a dryer as he tries to regain control of his car. In the next minute, they are on the side of the road, parked safely, when she looks at her, demanding an explanation. She clarifies that since their university days, all the projects they collaborated on were always successful, which he denies insisting that it was through her marvelous leadership and that he possesses no such qualities. She then clears the air by saying she was just joking and that she brought him along because he knows the intricate details of the project and thus can convince and lure reasonably. He agrees and vows to fulfill his duties passionately, making her giggle at his enthusiasm. He compliments her that it's good that she smiles, as her anger can only make her potential suitors run in fear, with their tails between their legs, making her threaten him by claiming she will make her best friend. Ting Ting breaks up with him. He admits his defeat at this and offers her solace by saying that she has many eligible bachelors vying for her, as she had been a charming and beautiful person since their university time. She thinks he is lying. But he argues, insisting that all the rejected came to him for consoling, to which she thanks him. He, however, asks about what kind of a person she would like to marry, offering help from him and Ting Ting regarding shortlisting the bachelors, to which she offers no response. Zhuo Zhang then assures her that he will always support her and the company, to which she asks if everything is now resolved, with Ting Ting making him surprised as to how she knew. Min Huey replies that he looked pretty worried a few days ago and appears relaxed now, thus the assumption. He bashfully wonders if he is that transparent and admits that they have made up. She warns him that he mustn't hurt her best friend if she has to fire him, to which he assures her that he won't, making the atmosphere in the car lighter. Soon they arrive at the airport. Sitting at the airport lounge, Zhuo Xiang wonders about the sister's parents arriving in town to meet them. He sends the twin sisters a message separately on WeChat and QQ, letting them know of his impromptu trip to settle their parents in a hotel in case they come before him and to wait for his return. Min Huey comments sarcastically that he might also send her a text message to a completely oblivious Zhuo. He yelps as it dawns on him that she might have seen his messages, outing their secret, accusing her of invading his privacy, to which she only scoffs, claiming she just saw him open both apps and didn't read what the text said, much to his relief. Zhuo then playfully remarks that his boss is being mean to take him on a business trip while Ting Ting's parents might arrive in town, surprising her. She wonders why her parents are visiting and whether there is any special reason, but he denies that this is just a regular visit. She looked relieved, professing that they were discussing getting married. Just then, both of the chat apps ping as Zhuo checks his phone, much to Min Huey's playful protest that he is flexing his relationship in front of her. The messages are from both sisters. Ting Ting is worried about this sudden trip, asks how many days it would last, and says he didn't pack anything. Her elder sister's messages contain the same worries but in a gentler tone. He explains the situation regarding and Laer by sending them separate messages copy-pasted. This makes both twins mildly irritated at the celebrity, with Ting Ting also being playfully angry at Min Huey for taking him away from them on such short notice. Ting Ting then types a message saying he must save so much time by copying and pasting his replies, shocking him immensely. He asks her what she meant by this, to which she sends a picture of her using both chat apps on the laptop simultaneously, pretending to be both twins. Now affronted, he accuses her of lying, but she cheekily responds that he never asked, so she never told. As he is chiding Ting Ting, protesting how he wasted his time by sending them everything twice. Min Huey chimes in by claiming that he corrupted Ting Ting into being so playful, to which Zhuo snaps at her for breaching his privacy. She tells him that he should wrap up the conversation as he is about to board the plane. He then lets the peach-suited Ting Ting know that he will board the plane now, asking her to be responsible for her parents now, to which she agrees as the other sister hasn't responded yet, probably busy at work. However, as he is busy replying, Min Huey loses her patience, citing him for flirting during office hours, and pulls him by his tie. 
Min Huey drags Zhuo Zhang with his tie towards the plane. This makes him extremely bashful as he glances around at people who look at him, either mocking him, feeling sorry for him. He musters up the courage and asks her to let him go because people misunderstand them. Just now realizing their situation, Min Huey stops in her tracks just as an old lady approaches them and tells her to let her husband take some pride in public places and not to demean him so openly. Now blushing, Min Huey releases him and quickly paces away, but not before yelling at Zhuo, and then shifting the blame for this situation on him as he explains himself to the old lady. Seeing her demeanor makes him pleasantly reminiscent of how she hasn't changed. They board the plane and settle down on their seats while his thoughts continue how he has been like this since their university days, how she had always been bossy and strict making sure every task is done with perfection, by working on hours on end for the group's mutual benefit. He gazes at her as he thinks of her, making her question him. However, Zhuo responds by saying he remembered their university days, to which she replies that although they graduated only three years earlier, it still feels like a lifetime ago. He agrees that, indeed, the time has gone by swiftly. He shares how she has been the one who oversees him from university to his career, to which Min Huey inquires whether he feels unlucky. Zhuo Xiang responds that he does much to her irritation, but only slightly, as working under her is more advantageous than not, as she makes him feel steady and relaxed. This makes Min Huey happy, just as a phone call interrupts their moment. It's Zhuo's phone, which makes him assume that the other Ting Ting is calling him from work. As he answers the phone, he hopes that he is discreet enough not to cause any suspicion to Min Huey regarding their secret. Ting Ting asks about the seeming urgency of this business trip, to which he agrees, claiming that they have just boarded the plane. She relents, letting him know not to worry as she will handle their parents while he can focus on his trip before chipping in on how their client, and La Er, is difficult to deal with. They both wish each other good luck when Zhuo accidentally calls Ting Ting they, much to Min Huey's surprise. This makes Zhuo Xiang almost drop the phone and fear as Min Huey mutters about his and Ting Ting's relentless flirting even after all these years. Zhuo then explains that he meant Ting Ting and Min Huey when he said good luck. His boss then asks him to hand over his phone as she wants to talk to his girlfriend, making him nervous. He lets Ting Ting know, advises her to be watchful of what she says, and hands the phone over. Min Huey takes the phone and snaps at Ting Ting for rubbing her. Zhuo Zhang's successful relationship is on her face, to which Ting Ting replies that it is not that this trip is so sudden, that Zhuo didn't pack anything, not even basic toiletries. She continues that Zhuo is wearing a two-day-old shirt. He cannot meet their client like this. Min Huey looks at him, slightly disgusted, and realizes that she might be right, and apologizes. Much to Ting Ting's chagrin, who argues that Min Huey has always been like this, not thinking through the tiny details before jumping headfirst into situations. Ting Ting then advises them to go shopping when they land if they have some time to spare. Min Huey agrees, insisting that she will buy new clothes for both on the company's bill, making Zhuo blush in embarrassment. Ting Ting giggles, wishing them good luck, and promises to also look for details regarding Enlar, as this client is important to both Min Huey and Zhuo Zhang, making Min Huey feel warm in gratitude as she cheekily kisses Ting Ting through the phone. This act makes Zhuo slightly jealous, which is accurately predicted by Ting Ting. Min Huey is unperturbed by this as she is the one who introduced them, threatening to move in with Ting Ting, making him relent. An air hostess walks by, telling them to buckle in and switch off their phones. Zhuo then returns his phone as they both reflect on how they almost got caught. Soon the airplane lands, and they walk out of the airport. Min Huey is on a call with their company's business manager, who tells them their meeting with Enla Er will be held in the next hour. This makes Min Huey upset regarding having so little time as they argue back and forth, but the manager cannot do anything as Enla Er has a busy schedule. Just then, Zhuo arrives in the taxi. Scoffing in irritation, she cuts the call and walks to the car. Zhuo Xiang seats her as the driver confirms that their destination is the Yu Shuang Ming store. Min Huey informs that they'll stop at the clothing store nearby and orders Zhuo to look for hotels there. This confuses him slightly, and she clears that they will freshen up before they meet the client. The driver quips in, clearly misunderstanding their intentions, much to Zhuo's mortification and Min Huey's oblivion who orders the driver to drive fast as they are on a tight schedule. In the next scene, they walk into a clothing store, where a salesgirl greets Min Huey. She asks the worker to help the man walking behind her, Zhuo, as she can manage her shopping on her own. The salesgirl watches Min Huey walks into the shop just as Zhuo enters. She then turns to greet him, gesturing for him to follow her politely. The salesgirl then takes him to a changing room, saying that his girlfriend is picking up his clothes. Hearing this, Zhuo immediately denies the statement, clarifying that she is his boss and they are on a business trip, 
nothing else. Bashful, the sales girl, apologizes, claiming that she thought they looked good together. Just then, his boss snaps at him from a nearby clothing aisle, urging him to quicken his pace. Juo turns to the changing room, relieved that Min Huey heard nothing of what the sales girl said. But as she glances at his retreating form, she seems to hear everything. Soon enough, she has chosen a few pairs of dresses, while the shop radiates with Juo's yelps as he deals with the onslaught of outfits from the sales girl. Min Huey chuckles as she slips into a two-piece skirt suit and walks out of the dressing room, asking Juo's opinion about her dress. She looks on, shocked, as he compliments her immensely. But the shock isn't from the complimenting words but from what he is wearing. She snaps at him for wearing such casual clothes to a business meeting. She wonders why his appearance hasn't improved since university, even after staying with Ting Ting for so long. He looks embarrassed, dressed in a pair of Hawaiian shirts and shorts, as he explains that he prefers casual wear, and isn't in tune with the field of fashion and that his girlfriend is the one who always picks his clothes daily. Much to Min Huey's apparent frustration, she yells that he has been spoiled rotten by his girlfriend, cutting off his excuses and claiming he uses his brain for work, not fashion, saying she regrets introducing both of them as he might not be worthy of her. He ponders over the words guiltily when she starts dragging him, maintaining that he will make them late for the meeting unless she picks the clothes herself. In the next scene, Juo walks out of the changing room, snickering at her apparent fashion sense. She face bombs as he playfully poses in front of the mirror, wearing clothes that aren't his size. She blows up on him, arguing her fashion sense is impeccable, and the clothes are to blame, not her. She continues this rant, blaming him for having long legs that don't fit the pants she gave him, and orders him to change into a larger size immediately. Juo follows his boss like an obedient puppy as she throws numerous clothes at him but none of the outfits look presentable on him, much to her continued irritation. Min Huey expresses her confused irritation to him when he whispers in a secretive whisper that they should ask Ting Ting for fashion advice as she knows his style best. She relents, ordering him to video call her right this instant, to which he takes out his phone immediately and dials her contact. Then, however, he realizes the possibility of Ting Ting at home picking up the call instead of one at work. As he panics about this, Min Huey snatches the phone from him impatiently, stating that they don't have enough time for dilly-dallying. Juo can on pray to the gods above to favor him as the call rings, but alas, the sister at home is the one who picks up, blissfully unaware of the situation in front of her. This stops Min Huey in her tracks as she wonders aloud why she is wearing sleepwear during work hours, making both Juo and Ting Ting freeze in fear. However, the latter bounces off the screen, excusing herself for a minute while Juo is left to explain the mess. His boss inquires whether this behavior is normal for her, to which he responds, claiming that she hasn't been sleeping well and cannot sleep without her nightwear, that might be the case. As he promises to get her some medical, his girlfriend pops back into the screen, scolding them for talking behind her back. She then asks them the reason for their call to which Juo frantically explains the situation. Seeing them frustrated makes Ting Ting giggle, and she expresses that buying clothes for him is a task on his own as his sizes differ in proportion. She explains that his legs are longer, so his average pants won't fit him. He doesn't look good in suit jackets. Just a two-piece shirt and tie will do. She adds playfully that he also might need new socks as he is prone to stink, making him protest indignantly. Juo then leaves both of them to chat while he changes his clothes. Min Huey sympathizes with Ting Ting for having to go to such lengths for him to wear something nice. She agrees, lamenting how he never likes to shop and doesn't appreciate her efforts. While this conversation continues, Juo returns from the changing room fully dressed and hears all this, making him feel slightly bashful. Min Huey then stops Juo mid-protest, handing his phone back, and orders him to quickly wrap up the phone call. But then she snatches it back and ends the call herself, promising to call her back once the meeting ends. Juo watches his boss exasperate as she tosses the phone back to him. She then walks to the cash counter and pays the bill for both of them despite his objections. Soon they are seated in a lounge, waiting for their client, as an attendant serves them tea. Time ticks by as they sit patiently. With Enla Er showing no signs of arrival, Juo finally loses his cool, complaining to his boss about how they hurried themselves to meet their client, but she is so rudely late. She coolly responds that she is just trying to demean them by appearing careless and that this is all a test from Enla Er. However, his boss isn't worried, as they have a well-established company backing them, while she is just an online celebrity influencer. Plus, the terms they offered in the contract are unrivaled by their competitors, so she will come if she wants to collaborate. 
Zhuo comments on how her online persona differs from what she is, to which his boss responds that the celebrity is both a nuanced business person and a famous star. She just advises him to watch and learn, as she offers to teach him business dealing basics. But her lessons won't be for free as she is treating this as an investment to make sure he works even harder. He remarks how he already works very hard, and his girlfriend will protest any more effort. She retorts how he should be thankful, as not many get this opportunity, to which he sincerely thanks her. She remarks on the sudden shift in the tone, to which he shares how after graduating, he worked in different companies under many rude and vile bosses, so he is genuinely grateful for being offered to work his potential under her guidance. His unfeigned expression of gratitude makes her feel emotional, but she quickly shrugs it off, asserting that she only hired him because he is easy to boss around and nothing more. But he is still in the passionate zone as he vows to work to his full potential for the benefit of the company, his colleagues, and his boss, although he stammers at the end of the sentence. To her credit, she only takes a sip of her tea at this, maintaining that these passionate words won't get him a salary raise, but his performance will. Their conversation is, however, interrupted by a voice behind them, and Laer ponders that she thought they would be angrily waiting for so long, not cheerfully flirting. They both turn around to face her as Min Huey slams the table angrily, demanding an explanation. And that's how the first part of this manhwa ends. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word part 2 also subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and like the video. But most important, leave a comment. Until the next video.